This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training in Book 3. In Chapter 3, this is Section 4, Integrity, Living in Divine Purpose. There can be no more important trait in authentic awakening than integrity. For without integrity, peace of mind remains an affirmation instead of an actual experience. Integrity depends on consistency and purity of thought. Without alignment with the Holy Spirit, integrity will seem out of reach and guilt will seem real in awareness. It is possible to desire, believe, think, feel, perceive and act with consistency by following the Holy Spirit and only following the Holy Spirit. Another name for the ego is deception. When deception is believed in, the illusion of guilt seems very real indeed. Affirmations, mantras and well-wishing can never become substitutes for looking within and exposing the belief system of the ego. Pockets of guilt must be exposed and voluntarily given to the Holy Spirit. As this occurs, it becomes apparent that guilt was never real. Confusion results from the attempt to serve two masters and see two worlds. Yet it is impossible to see two worlds that have no meeting point. There is no going back to the past. There is no way to really repeat the past. The past can only be forgiven or released. Innocence and guilt arise from two different thought systems. One is real, one is not. God is a God of pure love and innocence and therefore union with God can only be experienced in a state of innocence. Guilt is always a sure sign that the mind is listening to the ego and afraid of the Holy Spirit's voice. Guilt is a way of closing down and shutting off, an attempt to be separate, alone and isolated. The Holy Spirit offers healing and waits patiently for guilt to be exposed willingly, voluntarily. That is why I often emphasize that it is important to share what is on your mind and keep nothing hidden. For in truth, there is nothing to hide. Yet this is only experienced by not attempting to deny or protect the guilt as it rises into awareness. Unprotected guilt dissolves in the light of love so effortlessly. It takes enormous effort to hide guilt and keep it concealed behind multitudes of appearances and idols. Have you ever asked yourself, why am I attempting to hide the guilt I feel? 
Why do I hold on to guilt so tightly? What am I afraid will happen if I let go of this guilt? What is it that I value in this world that I really believe the Holy Spirit will take away? Resistance is futile, for it has no purpose. Salvation is no compromise of any kind. Yet salvation has no cost. Could the giving up of nothing for the remembrance of everything ever be considered a cost? The perceived world may have seemed comfortable and familiar at times. Yet it always carries a sense of guilt, insecurity or uneasiness. The insane reason that the mind fears letting go of the familiar and opening to God is the terror of the unknown. Yes, that is right. The distorted world thus become has become the known to a mind asleep and dreaming and God has thus become the big unknown. As long as it seems valuable to cling to the known ego, guilt will seem real in awareness. The moment the mind decides to accept the big unknown, God, guilt is gone forever and Christ and God are known. It really is this simple. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Listen to the Holy Spirit and this is not difficult. Listen to the ego and this will seem impossible. Do not hide from me, beloved one, for I love you forever and ever. Hiding presumes the arrogant belief that there is something that must be hidden. In God, there are no secrets, no mysteries. In God, everything is openly revealed. God is only light. Pull up the shades and open the blinds. Only the anticipation will seem to frighten a mind so accustomed to the dark. Bathed in God's light, it is obvious that there is only light. God's plan is to be happy, joyful and at peace. If you do not feel these emotions springing up and bubbling over, you are trying to follow an alien voice and a plan for keeping guilt concealed. Be not afraid to change course immediately, to change your tune at once, for you are entitled to miracles and the joy of working miracles. There is no way to experience joy fully if people-pleasing still holds an attraction for you. For people-pleasing is the attraction to and maintaining of guilt. Should this temptation arise in your holy mind, pause a moment and remember the gratitude you have experienced deep within. Let the strength of gratitude carry your awareness beyond the fear and the guilt. Remember all that our holy purpose offers. Step forward in the strength of our divine innocence. You have taken many steps inward. You have experienced many miracles. 
the openings and shifts have seemed swift indeed. There are many more that will seem to follow. Make fast your learning. Make fast your unlearning. For our purpose can have no exceptions or compromises to be itself. The perception of the multitudes fades into one healed tapestry of forgiveness. Now is the time. Be not afraid to call on me, my beloved. Be not tempted to turn away. I see our perfect innocence. There is nothing to seek in the world. There is no body's approval that is required to accept our retreat into eternal innocence. The seeming advance into the world was always an illusion. Let go of the business of the world, for it has served and it is forever behind us now. Heaven is approached as the world is seen as meaningless. You are the meaning that the world was made to hide. You are God's glory as the Christ. You are not letting anybody down in accepting the atonement. There is no cost to salvation. Everyone is with us in atonement. How could it be otherwise? All shines brightly in the innocence of love divine. In you is all of heaven. Every leaf that falls is given life in you. Each bird that ever sang will sing again in you. And every flower that ever bloomed has saved its perfume and its loveliness for you. What aim can supersede the will of God and of his Son? that heaven be restored to him for whom it was created as his only home. Nothing before and nothing after it. No other place, no other state nor time. Nothing beyond nor nearer. Nothing else in any form. Text chapter 25, section 4, para 5. I am with you always, beloved of God, for there is only one self.